us again for YPWW. Pray that God has been good to you. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We magnify your name. You're an awesome God. Oh, God, and we ask that you reveal to us your word, God. Give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. Tonight, well, today, uh, we're on lesson number 11, the wrong and right way to fast. Amen. And the aim of this lesson is to show the right and wrong way to fast in the secret place. And, you know, we got introduced to fasting last week. And just like everything else with praying, with giving, it's expected for us as saints to fast. And, you know, fasting means separating ourselves, consecrating ourselves for a spiritual purpose, you know, to get closer to God. So in a nutshell, that if we are separating ourselves from food, or anything else for a period of time. If we're fasting, that means that we are so focused on God that don't nothing else really matter. So as a believer, you know, I set for uh, food aside in order to concentrate and consecrate myself uh, for it to be used by God. So fasting the right way, you know, that means more than us just um, not eating. Because in the world, you know, the world, uh, they fast, you, you know, especially in the health in the sports arena, intimate fasting, you know, they do that for health reasons. So it means more than us just not eating, but it means we are trying to consecrate, consecrate ourselves and concentrate <laughs> on God so he can empower us, give us direction and put us in position where we could be used by him. But Jesus laid out the wrong way to fast for us in our lesson text, which comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. It says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So, what Jesus is trying to point out to us is that we must examine our motives when we fast. You know, why we fast is important, especially when it comes to the right reason to fast, the right way to fast. You know, that determines whether your fasting is right or wrong, the motives behind what you're doing. You know, and if we're not fasting for the right reason, it can actually be dangerous to us. You know, it it can actually be a hindrance in our lives. But he says, don't fast as the hypocrites. So he, again, teaching them, you've seen the wrong way to give. You've seen the wrong way to pray. You've seen the wrong way to fast. So it's important that I teach you not to be like the hypocrites. You know, we know what a hypocrite is. There's somebody that pretends to be something that they're not, claim to believe something that they really don't have, something that they really don't have. We don't use the term hypocrite all the time, but we may use the terms like phony, fake, you know, pretender, or, you know, they putting on, you know, different things like that. But if we aren't careful, we can be hypocrites when it comes to our fasting, just like the scribes and the Pharisees. They were doing these things for self-approval. They were doing it out of tradition. They wanted to get the praise and the recognition for the people, how long they fast or how they fast. They wanted to do it for a show. And Jesus tells us not to have disfigured faces. So what this actually means is he, he don't want us to be showing the world that we starving. <laughs> he don't want us to be, you know, when fasting is a spiritual discipline. So in a nutshell, we aren't when we're fasting, we aren't supposed to be looking sad. We aren't supposed to be looking pitiful. But when we're fasting, we're supposed to be being empowered by God. So we're supposed to be uh, exuding his his peace, his joy, his power, walking in his authority, not walking around looking pitiful. Want the world to know that we starving, you know, and we fast and want somebody to guess that we fasting or whatever, just to say that we anointed and close to God. So when we do it for the praise of men, you ain't got to look for nothing from God. You know, we are doing what we're doing for the glory of God. And people really shouldn't even know that you're fasting, you know, unless it's a corporate thing that you're doing with the church or with your family. But, you know, just any p person shouldn't even really know that you are on a fast. You know, and we don't want to be a church that looks for pats on the back. 
you know, and we don't want to look for things, or rewards for doing stuff that God's expecting us to do anyways. Another important fact that I want to, or another, well, another important thing that God laid on my heart to let you know, when it comes to fasting, God will never put you on a fast that will harm your body. Amen, somebody. God ain't going to tell you to do a seven-week fast when he know that's going to do harm to your uh, body. You know, he you know, if he does lead us to do, you know, uh, like he could lead you to do a week. He could lead you to do a month. But it's important that we know that it's him leading us to do what we're doing because he, he don't want you to fast and do harm to yourself. You know, he don't want you to fast and hurt your body, harm your body, but he wants to strengthen you and empower you. So we might remember, have to remember that all fasts are led by God and we don't want to be doing stuff just to do it out of duty. That makes us a hypocrite as well. So when we change our appearance or the way we act, you know, to draw attention to ourselves so that we can be asked what we doing, then we lost, we've lost sight of why we are fasting anyways. But the problem with the hypocrite is not what they do, but it's why they do it. And, you know, they just want it to be seen in the public. And the only reward we'll get by fasting the wrong way is the recognition and the praises of people. But verses 17 and 18 in our lesson team now shows us the right way to fast. He says, but thou, when thou fasted, anoint thine head and wash thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Again, Jesus said, when you fast, he expects us to fast. And we know by reading the word of God in, in, in the early church in Acts uh, chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 4, chapter 1, you know, we can see that the early church, they fasted for God's direction and experience God's power. So it's expected for us to fast, you know, and putting down our flesh and fasting the right way, spending time with God will cause us to be effective as saints in our decision-making and also in our ministering. And it's a, it should humble us when we fast. The closer we get to God, the more we time we spend in his presence, we should see how much we need him, how much we depend on him. And in the phrase unto God uh, in our lesson text, it reminds us that fasting is only to be done unto God and for nobody else. When we fast, we fast to God alone and God is the focus of any fast and fasting for any other reason other than God is wrong. Fasting the right way has its, has its rewards. It says God will reward us openly and we'll deal with that more next week when we deal with the rewards of fasting. But God will honor the fast that is done the right way and with the right motives. And one of the best examples is Jesus himself. Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 and 2, he fasted. Uh, but he was also led to do what he did. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards in hunger. So for 40 days, Jesus didn't eat or drink. And the, this temptation in the wilderness was whether to choose, see if he was going to surrender to his flesh or he was going to be committed to going to the cross. And this is an example of why we have to, why it's important to fast the right way, showing us uh, that fasting is a spiritual discipline because Jesus may have been weak in his flesh during this time, but the power in him, the power of God in him was strong. So we can see one big reason for praying with fasting and fasting the right way is defeating the desires of the flesh because the flesh and the spirit are always going to be at war with one another. But when we fast and we pray, those two go together all the time. God is strengthening us. He's getting us ready to receive from him. And throughout the whole Bible, we see examples of how the fasting the right way and the reasons why they fast, especially in the Old Testament as well. You know, they fast when they were repenting. They fast when they were grieved. They, they fasted to show their devotion to God and to intercede on the behalf of other and others. And that's one that we are very familiar with. And that leads us to our memory verse, Psalm 35 and 13. 
But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. So it would, we are very familiar with interceding on the behalf of others. And fasting plays a major part in that. And as saints, one thing we have to remember is that it's never about us. You know, we are called to be witnesses. We are called to be the preservers of this earth. So that means we're called to love and care for and intercede on the behalf of other people. And fasting uh, is a part of that. And when we read our memory verse in this psalm, this psalmist is saying that even though he's been done wrong by people, he still interceded for them when they were sick. Even the ones that wanted only bad and evil things to happen to him, he still interceded with fasting for them. And fasting is what helps us keep our flesh in check. You know, it's easy to pray for your loved ones, your friends, but what about your enemies? What about the people that talk about you and come against you? And if this psalmist was able to do this, then we can do this too. And the things that will keep us from fasting is, th I mean, uh, yeah, fasting on the behalf, or interceding on the behalf of our enemies are things like pride, jealousy, envy, uh, malice, uh, you know, uh, vengeance, you know, covetous, being covetous, and all of those are works of the flesh, you know, be, uh, holding grudges, you know, things like that, bitterness, those things are works of the flesh, and that'll keep you from uh, interceding on the behalf of any and everybody and praying for others. Uh, when we push aside our physical hunger and feed our spirits, again, when we obey these spiritual disciplines then that's what makes it where we can pray for our enemies we can do matthew 5 6 and 7 we can obey god's commandment and be and follow his example and intercede on the behalf of everybody and love everyone so there is a lot of benefits to fasting especially fasting the right way and when we fast the right way this shows God that we want to be in his presence. It shows him how humble we are before him. It shows him how much we depend on him. And fasting shows God how committed to him we are. Amen. So we thank God for this lesson on today. Thank God for all of you. And we're going to leave you with question number one in our book. It says, have you ever fasted and failed to get the desired results? How did you respond or handle it? Amen. So again, we thank God for you joining us. Let's end with a word of prayer. God, we love you. We thank you for these lessons and we ask that you help us apply them to our lives. We pray for each and every individual that comes across this video. We thank you, God, even now for reclaiming the backslider, saving the sinner, refreshing the saint, God. And God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, this day that you've given us to please you. And God, we thank you for your word. Again, help us to apply to our lives. Help to be obedient as we want and desire to walk pleasing in your sight. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you again. We are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Dean, Louisiana. Pastor Donald Douglas is our pastor. Thank God for our First Lady, First Lady Douglas. And thank God for all of you. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the page, share the page. And I pray that the word of God is helping you and as you go forth in your own personal study sessions at home with your, with your family, friends, or even your own personal time. We love you. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll see you next week.